Welcome to Crafty Wafty! Hi everybody, it's Debbie here from Crafty Wafty and today I thought I'd just show you some of our new arrivals into our Crafty Wafty store. We've got the gnomes. The gnomes have arrived and what better way than to sort of start thinking about, dare I say it, making your Christmas cards and, and gifts and things. But I absolutely love these gnomes and these stamps are from um, Woodware and they are lovely and big, nice, clear stamps, which make them beautiful for colouring in. So here are just some of them um, that we've got in the store. So this is our, our gnome wishes. I think he's rather lovely. If you can see him there and you've got some little sentiments there. We've got this one, which is the um, tris Christmas tree one. He's got a little, lovely little Christmas tree on his head. And I love this. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. That's a fantastic um, sentiment that you can use on any card it doesn't have to just be with the gnomes then we've got this one which is the snow gnome he's got a lovely little snowman sitting on his head um, let's put that over there this is our reindeer what i love about these is is that when you get the stamps you've got them protected between the two plastic films which is just lovely as well and this is another one this is called tall tree christmas gnome and he's just perfect as well so what i thought i'd do today is is i'm going to take one of these and i'm going to show you what they look like when they're all colored up so let me just move them over to one side okay here's just some of the gnomes that i've colored so there's the christmas tree one there's the reindeer one and the snowman so as you can see they are just beautiful once you sort of get into coloring them and um and then obviously what i've made them is like a topper so then i can put them on card and stuff like that and make them into whether it's a whether it's a large eight by eight card or a tall tall slim card you know whatever i want i can sort of use these but these are classes my like toppers so i thought i would have a go at showing you how to make or how to um, colour in this one so i'm just going to get all my stuff ready and then i'll be back right let's crack on then and get our our picture or our stamp coloured in now what i tend to do is is that when i have brand new stamps i always like to stamp them up and i make myself a little colour colour chart i suppose on the on the stamp itself so that i know exactly what colours i've used so here's one that i i did earlier and i was trying on this one with a bit of watercolours but i wasn't happy with the effect but what i do is is i just write as you can see it's really scribbled down the colours of the pens that i've used so i've been using the spectrum noir pen so i've got all the colours written down there and the ink pads that i've used so mermaid lagoon and peacock feathers so that i know that next time i come to do the card i've got everything there that i need that i need for that so i yeah as you can see it's really scribbled down but then i just keep that to one side so that i've got it for future reference um another little thing that i use when i'm doing do my cards are um is doing a mask and what i wanted was is to be able to get that nice blended color sort of in the background but obviously not to affect my actual image at all so this has been stamped up or the image has been stamped up on repositionable sticky paper which you can buy in on um, like in sheets or on a roll so what i've done is is i've stamped them up as you can see i've used him quite a bit already and what i'm going to do is just line him up over the image that i've already already stamped so i'm just have a little fiddle with this and try and get him lined up as best as i can there we go let's just try so the idea is of using the mask is is so that you it the color that you're putting on behind doesn't um impact or affect the the main image itself because that's what i'm going to want to use to sort of color in afterwards and there's my little heart there so i'm just going to pop that on there okay right i'm just going to move all this stuff out of the way and then i'm going to get all my stuff ready to do that now i always have a little bit of scrap card by the side of me so i can um you know sort of test out my inks before i put them onto my card now because of these two colors are two shades of blue the peacock feathers one is a little bit lighter than the uh, mermaid lagoon so what i'm going to do is is i'm just going to use let's 
take that off like that just going to use the peacock feather first now i always just take a little bit of ink just try that on there first get a little bit of that and then i'm just going to go round as so i just take that off that's it i'm just going to go round and i always do it in circle movement so i can get that nice blended blended look okay it's turning around a little bit that's it let's just go around like so now when i was cutting out the um the mask i, I really did have a look at the detail on my um, stamp as to what i wanted to be covered or not um so depending on the type of stamp will determine you know what you want to leave exposed i suppose as what you want to be colored in but because he's quite a nice solid solid stamp it was easier and the one thing i didn't do was obviously cut round the hands because it doesn't matter all the sticks here um it doesn't matter that he was going to have that covered because that's sort of like it free in the in the background like so let's have a little look so I've just gone lightly, lightly round, round that. So you probably can't see the difference at the moment, but once we peel that off, you'll see how it pops out, right? So I'm just going to pop that to one side. Now I've got the Mermaid Lagoon. So I'm just, again, just going to go in, dab a little bit off. Now with the Mermaid, because it's a slightly darker colour, I'm just picking out certain areas like i suppose a bit like where the creases are and where i just want a little bit of definition on on my stamp so it just gives the background a little bit more, more interesting sort of look to it so it's not all completely the same the same color and i think i'm quite sort of happy with happy with that a little bit round around there like so okay let's pop those on because i always end up getting it all over myself let's tuck this away for the minute right okay now here we come the moment of truth that we're going to peel off peel off the mask and see how we've done uh -huh. this is i always find this bit quite fascinating it always sort of is exciting just to see this bit there we go. Right, let's just get my little mask book. I'm going to pop him on because then I can use him again and again. And now I'm just going to take off, take off the little, the little heart. Okay, so that's how I've managed to get my background. And now what we're going to do is have a little look at um, the colouring in. Right now for the colouring in, what I wanted to do is um, keep the shading right because as I don't know if you can see here, I've just gone round in the light in the light blue around the outside. So I wanted to keep that, but I want to keep the shading the same. So I'm going to use the same ink pad that I've used for um, for the for the background. So I'm just going to let's just dab, dab a little bit of ink in there like that so i'm using a distress ink here i've got just one of the um watercolor brushes so i've already got water in there so i'm just can pick up that color from there in my little paint palette well i say paint palette actually this was this will make you laugh a friend of mine and i we went to a local supermarket and bought garlic balls and this was the actual tray that they were they were in so as a crafter i thought great i'm not going to waste that that will make a fantastic paint palette and here we are okay so i'm just going to pick up a little bit of color on there again i just have a little bit of scrap card before i start let's pop you up there so i can see what i'm doing just so i can test that out and then what i'm going to do is is just go round very lightly if you can see there just round actually let's move that out of the way a little bit that's it so you can see there um that's so it you can get a better better shot and i'm just going to take that round a little bit round and you don't have to be accurate with this you can you know because at the end of the day it's just to give it a little bit of shading now on these stamps what i love about this is it gives you a little bit of a hint as to um where you need a bit more definition 
so like for example we've got these little little tiny dots on the stamp so i'll just put a little bit of blue blue around his around the little heart here see i'm not really being particularly um precise about this it's just to give it a little bit of shading and then what i like to do is just give a little bit of definition around the and the buttons there so it just sort of helps pick that up okay so i'm just gonna let that dry for a minute and now what i want to do is um do the mermaid lagoon so i'm just going to put a little dab in there tuck that on there because what i want to do now is where the the little dots are is where i'm going to take that darkness or the slightly darker shade i suppose of that so again just tying it and i'm just going to add let's take a bit more water off there just to and this will dry a little bit lighter so i've just picked up picked up that on the on the blue maybe a little bit dark around his hat so you can just add a little bit of definition tiny little bit around those like so okay all right so that's the first part done right now we're going to get down to doing some coloring so i've just cleared everything away and on the back of my card here that i wrote before are the colors so i've got my gray got my red and the greens let's put those two greens together so i think what i'm going to do is is just start off with them um, let's go with the purple so the purple that i use is hb2 let's just uh check that i always have a bit of scrap card as well by the side of me when i'm doing this just to make sure that the pen's working okay and i'm happy with the color i'm going to start up here at the top and I'm just going to colour in, colour in the card. Now, what I tend to do is now everybody colours a little differently, but how I do it, especially when I'm using the Spectrum Noir pens, is that I tend to try and use the same colour pen. So we're just going to colour that in um, first. And then in order to get the shading and the definition that I need, I then go back in with the same pen, but just make it a little bit darker. So while that's drying, I'm just going to come back up here. And what I want to do is just put make a little bit dark around the around the side here. So I'm trying to sort of give the the hat its sort of curved shape. So I'm just trying to color around that bit. And then here I want a bit of definition around the edge. So I'm just going to come in like so, leaving that a little bit lighter there. OK, and then I'll come back up to here again and just put a tiny bit of bit of darkness in there just to finish off that definition. And then I'm just going to come round. And like so, so there I've sort of got my shading for my my little patch on there so that's that pen done i'm just going to let that dry for the moment next i think we'll go with the the red for the hearts and the little berries so i'm using here dr1 i'll just test that it's still working okay and again i'm just going to color in color in the, the hearts now, what I love about these designs is, is that you don't have to colour right up to the lines because if you do leave a little bit of light, it just gives it a little bit more interest to look at. So we're just going to sort of tuck those in there and I'll come back to the heart. Um, OK, let's just put, put a bit more red in on that side. So about half halfway and just sort of colour in like that and a little bit of red on there and then I'm gradually just building up those that shading that's it just so it gives it something a little bit different to look at okay so on my picture here I've got a little bit of highlight but that's fine because I'm going to use a white pen for that so I'll go back in and do that afterwards so we've done so let's pop you out the way and pop you out the way because i've used you right my next color is going to be the orange for the nose so this is or2 
oh that's it that's a bit stiff that one let's go in and just gonna and again just gonna color in his nose give it a little huff <laughs> and then i'm just going to add in a bit of dark this at the bottom just so you sort of and then again just go over so you sort of get that shaded on his nose let's pull the eyes out of the way right now we'll do his nose and his little hands test the color again okay so here we are literally just across like so it doesn't have to be perfect in like that let's just do the other hand something very therapeutic about coloring Right, I'm now going to come over and just give it a bit of definition round, so we're getting that bit of that curve on his on his nose, and then on the hand, I'm going to try and do a bit of a curved effect with the pen, so it looks like his hand. You know, you've got that shape to it, and I'm going to come round again and just do that last little bit on there, just so you get that bit of. Uh, definition so now you can see how the nose is beginning to sort of pop out a little bit and the same with the hand so just by giving that a quick curve like that okay so that's that one now what are we going to do let's go with the green so with green for the holly and for behind i'm going to start off with a light green first because i just want a little bit of light um at the end there so i'm just going to color that in on the ends again i'm not being particularly precise about these and then i'll just add in the l this is lg3 so again i'm just going to bring that down and just sort of blend that in so you've sort of got the tip of tip of that it's coming down like so and then i'm just going to go back again because where his beard is is you're going to have a bit of shadow underneath that so i'm just going to make that a little bit darker either side and then here we are we're just coming down i'm going to just go down the center of that holly leaf like so and we'll just come back and add in a little bit more this is what i love about alcohol pens because you can go over again and again and you're just going to get that definition right where are we up to now here we are we're on the tan or tn4 and we're going to do his shoes let's have a little look at his shoes so i'm just going to color in color in each shoe like so and then I'm going to want a bit of definition coming round underneath his beard because obviously his beard is going to be shadowy and we're going to have a little bit. And again here, you can see on the stamps, you've got a little bit of definition there. So I'll just curl that round a little bit, a little bit more again under the beard just to make that a little bit darker where the shadow is, a little bit in the corners. That's his beard. And then the last colour that I'm going to use is IG1, which is the grey. Now, the grey is what I use to try and sort of make the white pop out a little bit. So here again, you've got the little dots. But what I do is, is I go all the way round the outside first. Again, I'm not being particularly um, precise about this. It's just sort of giving it a bit of definition, a bit round around his nose because there'll be a little bit of shadow under his nose you've got a bit under the hands there we'll just come round bring that round there like that a little bit under the holly and then i'll just go back here we are over over the dots again just going to put there's a bit of a crease there natural crease there so i'll just add a little bit more to that a little bit there just come up those a little bit round oh that's a bit noisy motorbike in the background wasn't expecting that <laughs> it's a trouble isn't it when you're trying to do anything like this right okay and voila all right and then the final bit now on this one 
I did put a little bit of grey at the bottom so he looked like he's standing. But I actually, I think I'm going to leave it out because I quite prefer him as he is, really. I'm just going to add a little bit of grey and just a tiny little line under there. I think it looks, looks better than where I wiggled it. So sometimes, you know, it's trial and error with anything like this, isn't it? Okay, and then finally my white pen. So let's try and do that. And all I'm going to do is, is add a little bit of white to that. There's a little bit of stitching round round there we're just going to put a little bit of highlight on there tiny little bit on the cherries a little bit on the top of of that a little bit round the nose a little bit on the on the shoes and there we go and we have our lovely little snow gnome now all i need to do is um pop him on a card on some you know maybe back in with some paper do a bit of matter layering and then he'll be ready to go brilliant so, so let's, let's get, get crafty wafty, wafty.